how safe is the Texas Tech campus, coming up we'll have the numbers from a special report released last week. Some unusual visitors drop by the free speech area on Friday. Find out how these fuzzy ambassadors promoted an upcoming event next. And the Texas Tech Red Raiders opened up conference play at the Jones on Saturday. MCTV's Kyle Stafford will be in with a look back at the score and highlights in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Katie Main. And I'm Reagan Ranzer. Last night, a gunman opened a fire on a music festival in Las Vegas in the deadliest shooting in the U.S. history. Although the massacre was nearly a thousand miles away, the effects of the shooting can be felt here on the Tech campus. That's right, Reagan. Anytime a major violent or terrorist attack takes place across the country, students are left to wonder if the same thing could happen here. And it also raises the question of safety and security in our daily lives. So how safe are we on the Tech campus? Last week, the Office of the President, in conjunction with Texas Tech Police Department, released the annual Cleary Report to the Tech community. The report details the university's security policies as well as the campus crime statistics from the previous year. Based on the report findings, the Tech campus has seen an increase in criminal activity over the last three years. The areas with the largest increases included aggravated assault, burglary, motor vehicle theft, and arson. Of those areas, the most notable increase was in the number of aggravated assaults. In 2016, there are four times more assaults than in all of 2015. One area of the report that included a noticeable decline in crime was a report of sexual-based offenses. In 2015, eight rapes were reported on campus, with only five being reported in 2016. There are also no reports of forcible fondling in 2016 in comparison to one report in 2015 and five reports in 2014. One final area of note with increased statistics was crime reported under the Violence Against Women Act. In that part of the report, there were significant increases in the number of reports of domestic violence and stalking from 2015 to 2016. Dating violence was also included in that area of the report with a slight decrease in 2016. If you'd like more information on the annual Cleary Report as well as all of the documents released last week, visit the Texas Tech Police Department's website using the information listed on your screen. The free speech area outside the sub is often filled with student organizations and other campus groups promoting events, fundraisers, and activities. But last week, more than just students showed up to bring attention to one upcoming event. On Friday, the Texas Tech Study Abroad office set up a corral with two llamas just north of the sub near the veranda. From 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., students passing by had a chance to meet Dolly and Inca, fed them, and even took selfies with the llamas. Friday's Llamas visit was a unique way to bring attention to one of the study abroad's biggest events of the year. Wednesday we have the study abroad fair from 10 to 3 in the sub ballroom. and We'll have partners from all over the world coming to talk to students about the possibility of their program. Coming to the fairs is also a really great opportunity to meet international people um, and you'll be able to talk to people who actually live at the universities that students can go to and um, we'll have some freebies, we'll have some prizes and um, some giveaways. So it'll be really fun. The study abroad fair is scheduled from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. this Wednesday in the sub ballroom. The fair is free and open to all students. If you'd like to more, know more information about the fair or study abroad in general, visit the studyabroad.ttu.edu. Also on Friday, the University Library encouraged students to stop by and get fired up before Saturday's big game. Starting at noon, the library held a pre-game study break tailgate in the Crosland Room, just inside the east entrance. Students could stop by and enjoy free food and gifts, a photo booth, live music, and more. This is just a fun study break for students to come, chill, take a break from their reading and their group work and the stress of class, hang out with some friends, grab some food, and get ready for the awesome home game weekend. Last week's event was not the first time the library was, has hosted pregame festivities. Last year, the library also held a tailgate in the sub plaza prior to the Texas game. For a full list of activities taking place at the library each week, visit library.ttu.edu. There are many students on the Tech campus who attend class each day without a major. Although those students may have not decided exactly what their future holds, one group is helping to answer that question. Last week, the Double T College held a couple of events focusing the TTU chemistry department. 
On Friday, students were encouraged to stop by the Rawls College of Business Room 101 and enjoy a hands-on chemistry demonstration and lecture. From 2 to 4 p.m., chemistry professor Dominic Casadante demonstrated practical and interesting chemical principles through the use of experiments. During the demonstration, Dr. Casadante also called volunteers from the audience to help out with this experiment. Friday's event was one part of a series of lectures that are hosted each month by the Double T College. The goal of the Double T College is to introduce students to all that Texas Tech has to offer in short talks by leading members of the university's faculty. For a full list of Double T College events for the fall semester, visit the office of the Provost website at provost.ttu.edu. Last week, the Texas Tech campus saw more than two inches of rain along with cloudy skies. We saw periods of light rainfall every day from last Monday through Saturday. Yeah, Reagan, it was an unusually gloomy week here on the South Plains, but as of this morning, it looks like things are slowly starting to get back to normal. Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The Memorial Circle Cam is showing mostly clear skies for the first time in more than eight days this afternoon. Temperatures have also climbed into the low 80s, making for the warmest day we've seen in almost a week and a half. Tonight, we'll continue to see mostly clear skies and temperatures should fall back into the mid-60s. Tomorrow, we'll start off the day with partly cloudy skies, but cloudy conditions will con return mid-morning. Late in the afternoon, we should see a break in the clouds and temperatures will climb into the high 70s. But by tomorrow night, we'll see mostly cloudy conditions again with a slight chance for thunderstorms. Overnight, lows will fall back into the mid-60s. On Wednesday, storm chances return to the area, making for another soggy day here on the Tech campus. Temperatures are predicted to reach the mid-70s in the afternoon, so it shouldn't be as cool as we saw last week. Overnight storm chances continue into early Tuesday, Thursday morning, but we should dry out before 8 a.m. On Thursday, we'll see another day of overcast skies and highs in the upper 70s. By late evening, the clouds will begin to clear out and low temperatures are expected in the mid-60s. Looking ahead, stormy conditions will be back to end the week before sunny skies return this weekend. The Red Raider football team put up a fight against Oklahoma State on Saturday, but by the end of the night, Texas Tech ended up with their first loss of the season. MCTV's Kyle Stafford joins us in the studio with a look back at Saturday's tough loss to the Cowboys. Kyle. Thanks, Katie and Reagan. Texas Tech's upset bid came up just short against number 15 Oklahoma State Saturday night, falling 41-34. After the offense got off to a slow start, it was the Red Raider defense that got them back into the game. DeMarcus Fields intercepted Cowboys quarterback Mason Rudolph's pass, taking it 95 yards to the house to tie it up at 7. Oklahoma State would take the lead shortly after and took a four-point advantage into the half. The beginning of the second half would see the Cowboys' lead grow to 14 before the Red Raider offense would finally begin to click. Touchdown runs from Justin Stockton and Desmond Nisby tie the game up at 34 apiece with just under 10 minutes to go in the game. After a missed field goal, the Red Raiders had a chance to take their first lead of the night but were forced to punt it away. Oklahoma State would then capitalize as Rudolph took one in himself from 16 yards out for the game-winning score. Quarterback Nick Sheminek finished with 330 yards through the air and one touchdown. Cameron Batson led the wide receiver group with six catches for 84 yards, and in total, the team posted 384 yards. Texas Tech continues conference play this Saturday as they travel to Lawrence, Kansas for a matchup with the Jayhawks. Kickoff is set for 11 a.m. and can be seen on Fox Sports 1. Red Raider soccer fell 1-0 at home yesterday to TCU in overtime. The loss was their second straight and are now 8-4-1 on the season. Texas Tech returns to action this Friday night as they travel to Waco for a matchup with the Baylor Bears. Start time is set for 7 p.m. Volleyball hits the road for a matchup against the Oklahoma Sooners Wednesday night. Texas Tech is coming off a heartbreaking loss at home to number 18 Iowa State in five sets. First serve is set for 7 p.m. That's all for sports. Back to you, Reagan. Thanks, Kyle. It's been shaping up to be a pretty busy week here on the Tech campus, but that means you shouldn't have to have any trouble finding something to do. Let's take a look at the MCTV's events calendar. Tonight, head on over to the Hemley Recital Hall in the School of Music and enjoy the sound of the TTU Jazz Ensembles. Both the big bands and small combos will play various recognizable pieces, as well as some more recently composed work. The show will also feature solos by many different members of the ensembles. Tonight's program starts at 7.30 p.m. and is free and open to the public. If you're like a lot of students, managing your finances may not be your best skill. Luckily, one campus group is hosting several events that can help you keep some extra cash in your pocket. 
From today through Thursday, Red to Black Peer Financial Coaching is hosting the annual Financial Education Week. Every day you can stop by the sub and participate in various activities to help you learn how to handle your money. Tomorrow, Red to Black will have a table across from Barnes & Noble in the sub from 12 to 2 p.m. During that time, you can stop by, grab a stress reliever ball, and enter the Don't Let Your Finances Stress You Out contest. To enter the contest, you can take a picture of how you de-stress and post it to Red and Black social media. The winner will receive a prize package. Tomorrow's event and the social media contest are free and open to the public. And tomorrow night, take part in a new event on the Tech Campus that is helping to give a forum for various thoughts on important issues. The second edition of the Civil Counterpoint series will be held Tuesday evening starting at 5.30 p.m. in the Sub Allen Theater. Cooling down the heated debates, understanding approaches to the climate change is scheduled topic for tomorrow night's conversation. Four experts from the campus community will be on stage in a moderate debate that will cover all the hot topics and issues associated with the Earth's changing climate. Tuesday's event is free and open to the public. So Reagan, do you have any big plans this week? I'm um, just studying for exams. Me too. Good luck with those. Thank you. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.